Welcome back. I am in conversation with Dr. Petra McLaughlin, the headmaster of the Dune School, on the sprawling 70-acre campus that has more than 200 species of trees. Uh, Dr. Petra McLaughlin, the school was set up in 1935 mm -hmm. by the Kolkata lawyer and visionary uh, Satish Ranjan Das to educate boys between the age of 12 and 18. Mm -hmm. Uh, to help build a modern India uh, and, and, and take forward its idols of democracy and meritocracy. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. have you been ach able to achieve this goal or this dream? C certainly, um, we have within our own context. Uh, what uh, SR Das wanted to do was to produce boys who would, who would uh, be, be part of a free and democratic India. In, in the run-up to our Platinum Jubilee celebrations in 2010, we said, has that mission been fulfilled? And uh, we said, well, India is free and democratic, so that's been uh, achieved. Is it truly meritocratic? So we said, for the next 75 years, we would want to set out our vision for the school and our mission as ensuring that our boys participated in the creation of a truly meritocratic India. And in that sense, we didn't mean Vedic. Yeah. Mer merit. We, we, we meant yeah. equal opportunities for every, every citizen because that was his vision. Within the school, we've achieved that, but whether, in, whether DOSCOs who've left the school have, have helped that to be achieved in wider Indian society is a matter for debate. It's a matter for debate as well as for the large, vast majority of Indians perhaps to decide. Uh, the founders also you know, wanted boys from across India to come and study at the Dune mm, School. That's right. What is the situation today? Do you have boys from across India coming over here to study? Yes, we, we have boys from 28 states studying in the school at the moment. Um, there was a time in the 80s and 90s when uh, the Dune School did contract somewhat. It never lost its all India identity completely, but it contracted somewhat onto a, a more central and northern Indian demographic. Yeah. Um, but in recent times, I've been very keen to make sure that we have uh, a large representation from every region of India and, and to have every state represented in the See, school. Our, our channel comes from Northeast India. That's right. Uh, <clears throat> now, I mean, Northeast India is again a vast region of 40 million people. That's right. Uh, it is far away from the, if I may use the word, mainland in <laughs> India. Right. Uh, and it has got more, I mean, borders with uh, foreign countries than perhaps with the Indian mainland, not perhaps than with the Indian mainland. Uh, so, I mean, does the Northeast figure in your scheme of things? Absolutely. Um, we, we've always had boys since the foundation of the school who've come from that part of the country, and we have, we have boys from, from the Northeast uh, with, with us at present. Um, but we want to make sure, we don't have a quota system, but we do want to make sure that uh, boys in every part of India have equal access to the Dune School. Um, everyone has to pass an admission uh, yes. test uh, uh, to, to get in here. Um, but, you know, we feel that our, uh, boys from other regions add value to each other's lives. Right. I, I spoke to one of our year seven uh, students a, a couple of years ago, and he said, uh, I asked him what was the thing that he had found um, most difficult about coming to the Dune School and what was the best thing about it. He said, the best thing is, he said, so I feel so privileged to meet boys from every part of India because I never realized how diverse we are, how different our customs, our yeah. beliefs, uh, yeah. our experiences have been. It's actually, India is actually a continent masquerading perhaps as a country. That's right. So perhaps instead of seeing ourselves as a national school, we should see ourselves as a continental, continental school. Continental school. Yeah, and we that's have, a new coin. Uh, is, I but think we, we do have boys that. from Bangladesh and boys from, yeah. uh, boys from Pakistan in the past. Uh, Correct. Not at the moment, although we have... I mean, if I may ask you, what is, you, you of course said that everybody has to pass that admission test, but if I may ask you, what is the admission criteria? Is it only merit and nothing else? Well, yes, uh, absolutely. So um, we, do, we do give a, a, a small consideration to the uh, sons and grandsons of uh, alumni, um, but uh, they have to pass an examination. There's no automatic right of entry for, for that consideration list or legacy ad admissions. We don't have any quotas or the, What is the consideration in that? What, what we do is we give them a slightly lower cutoff at the written okay. stage, uh, but then they have to go through an interview uh, they have to pass. Like and we, any, and, like and we, else. That's right. And we turn down many sons of alumni, which is difficult for us to do and difficult for them to Absolutely. accept. But the vast majority of our students are actually come through on what we call the general list. Right. Now, now, now you see, there is a feeling, a perception or a feeling that only boys of rich parents can come and study at the Dune School. And my question is, do you offer scholarships 
to you know, meritorious but needy students. Absolutely. Once a boy gains admission to the Doon School, we can almost guarantee that we will finance his, his education. So when people ask me, what are the fees of the Doon School? I say it depends. How much financial aid do you need, if you need any at all? So we have 40% of our boys on scholarships, ranging from 115 to 120% of the fees through to 25% of the fees, and, and, and a number on, on full fees. So. Um, a, so we're, and we're hoping to raise that number to 50% of our boys. We're working towards that. So at the moment, 40% of your boys are on scholarship, some form or the other. That's right. But and you want to increase it to 50%. That's right. Now, are you going to tell my viewers today that all a boy has to do is to pass the Dune School entrance test? And after that, even if he doesn't have the financial resources, Dune School is going to arrange for his study under some scheme or the other. That's right. We will, we will ensure that um, he's able to continue his education here. It's, it's, a, it's a popular cause with our uh, alumni. Uh, they've endowed a, a corpus with us. But we also set aside a very substantial proportion of our income to, to assist uh, boys to, to come to us. Right. And as we discussed before, uh, Dr. Peter McLaughlin, is that India is a diverse country, caste, creed, religion, rich, poor, uh, and whatnot. Uh, you know, how, have, you have students from this whole wide spectrum. That's correct. Uh, I, have, uh, I understand that even children of gardeners and other such uh, financially challenged, That's if right. I may use the word, yes, of people course. are also students at Doon School uh, competing and studying comfortably with uh, the sons of perhaps billionaires who are studying in your school. How do you cope with this uh, you know, situation in the, with this pluralism? That's right. Well, um, part, part of it is embedded in the ethos of the school since its foundation. But we do also have um, traditions and customs. You're talking about traditions. Yeah. Uh, every boy is equal. Every boy, it, it, we have a cashless society. Where cashless. The, so no boy is allowed to have any cash. If he, if he has, is found with any cash, 10 rupees, he, he's in my office. Um, every boy has the same amount of money in the boy's bank. Um, and uh, for some boys, we put the money there. For some, their parents put the money there. It's yeah. an identical amount. And everything, that's a computerized system, uh, and they draw money from that account. When it's depleted, whether you're a billionaire or whether you're... That doesn't matter. It, it, does, it doesn't Absolutely. matter. And then uh, boys are not allowed to have fancy gadgets. They have a, a sim very simple iron bed, all have the same mattress. Um, and uh, you know, we have some amusing stories about um, the expectations of some families when they come here, but we, we disabuse them of those notions very quickly. So, so it is quite, it's quite different from the uh, colonial era when Indian princess is to go to study in England with a retinue well, that's of right. attendance. That's right. Well, it did happen at, at the, in the very early days when one of the first boys to come to the Doon School was a Maharaja's son, and, okay. he, and he arrived with a huge retinue, including elephants <laughs> and baggage <laughs> and so on. <laughs> And uh, the retinue was sent away. They weren't allowed to have admission to the school and set up did, camp. Did, did the boy continue here? He did. He, he did. did. He did. Well, good to hear. Good to hear that. Yeah. Good to hear that. And uh, in this today's uh, world, where there is a campaign across India of VVIP racism, they, as the That's media right. calls it, I think uh, that fits into the scheme of things. Uh, before I end this section, Dr. Peter McLaughlin, in your own words, what is the academic ethos of the Dune School? Um, we, we have very high expectations of boys when they come in here. Um, and that's not to say that they need to be geniuses to come to the Doon School, yeah. but we, we, we do pride ourselves on adding tremendous value academically. Um, I think one of the weaknesses of legacy boarding schools in India has been that they have not been strong on academics. And for me, an all-round education yeah. doesn't mean sports and other activities, it, may, it includes academics. Otherwise, it's hyphen education. So one of the things we, we have done is- Interesting way of putting it, hyphen, otherwise it is hyphen education. That, 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 that's right. I mean, it's, it's, um, you, you're getting 50% of an education um, if, if you have only academics, and you're getting 50% of an education if you concentrate on sports and uh, those other activities. I believe that both should be together and then you have a complete education. So academics are very important to us. Absolutely. Complete education, the ethos at the Dune School. On that note, we shall go for another short break, but stay on. We'll be right 